Hey everyone, today I have a coding interview question that's being asked by Facebook. In this problem, you're given a mapping that's like this one. So in this mapping, the letter A maps to one, as you can see, and B to two, and so on up to Z, which maps to 26. And with this mapping, if you're given a message in a string, for example, A, B, you can convert it to another string, uh, in this case, one, two, because A maps to one, and B maps to two. And in this problem, you're given the converted version of the string, for example, one, two again, let's call it data for now. And the problem is, can you write a function that takes this data as the input and returns the number of messages that could have been the original message? Or in other words, how many ways are there to decode this message back to the original message? So for example, if the given input is one, two, your function, let's call it num ways of data should return two because there are two possible messages that can be encoded into one, two. One of them is, as we saw earlier, a, b, and the other one is actually just l because l maps to 12. And if you're given, for example, zero, one instead as the data, your function num ways of data should return zero instead because there's no message that maps to zero one. Okay, uh, try solving this problem in O of n in time where n is the number of letters in the given string data. And by the way, just for simplicity, you can assume that the given data string has only digits inside, you know, between zero and nine. Okay, pause the video right here if you want to try solving this problem by yourself. And by the way, this problem came from this website called Daily Coding Problem. You can get more problems just like this one through my referral and discount link, csdojo.io slash daily. Anyway, here's my solution. I would first think about simpler examples. So for example, what if you're given three as the input? Then there's only one message that can be encoded into three and that's simply the letter C. So your function should return one. And what if you're given the empty string? Then the original message must have been an empty string as well. So there's only one possible message here as well. So your function should return one. Okay, and what if you're given more complex input? For example, this one, one, two, three, four, and five. Well, in that case, let's examine the input one, three, four, and five, then we can think about decoding it from left to right sequentially. And at the beginning, there are two choices. The first one is to look at the first letter, one by itself, and then decode it back to A, because as we saw earlier, A maps to one. And the second choice is to look at the first and the second letter together, and then decode it back to L instead because L maps to 12. Now, if you go with the first choice and decode one to A, then the whole message that you get by decoding the whole string will look like this. It'll be A put together with whatever you get by decoding the rest of the message, two, three, four, and five. And if you go with the second choice and decode one, two to L, what's gonna be left will be three, four, five, so the whole message that you get by decoding the whole string will be L put together with whatever you get by decoding three, four, five, the rest of the message. So actually the number of ways we can decode this message, one, two, three, four, five, will be the sum of the number of ways we can decode two, three, four, five, and the number of ways we can decode three, four, five. So that's what I wrote here, num ways of one, two, three, four, five, is the sum of num ways of two, three, four, five, and num ways of three, four, five. And this is starting to look like recursion. Anyway, let's take a look at another example. What if you're given two, seven, three, four, five instead? Well, you might say, let's try the same thing. So let's do that. One way to decode this is to look at the first letter and then decode it back to B. And that way, the whole message you get by decoding the whole string will be B combined with whatever you get by decoding the rest of the message, 
seven, three, four, and five. And what if you look at the first and the second letters together? Well, there's no single letter in our mapping system that maps directly to 27. And that's just because we only have up to Z, which maps to 26. So actually, this is the only way to decode two, seven, three, four, and five. So the number of ways of decoding this message two, seven, three, four, and five is equivalent to the number of ways of decoding seven, three, four, and five. And that's what I wrote right here. Let's take a look at just one more example here. What if you're given a string that starts with zero at the beginning? Well, in that case, there's no message that would encode into this string, 011, because no single letter maps to zero or 01. So none ways of 011 should return zero. Now using all of these, let's write our function recursively. There are basically two base cases here. The first one is when the string is empty, and the second one is when the given string starts with at zero. And for the recursive case, there are two cases. The first one being when we need to call our function recursively twice, and the second one is when we need to only call the function recursively once. Okay, let's see how we can turn this idea into code. Like we saw earlier, we're gonna call our function numways of data. And instead of calling this function recursively directly, we're gonna define another function. Let's call it just helper. And we're gonna call this function recursively. And it's gonna take data, the given string, and k, which is going to be a non-negative integer. And in the helper function, we're only gonna look at the last k letters of data. So for example, if the given data is, let's say, a, b, c, d, and if the given k is three, we're only gonna look at the last three letters, b, c, d. And this way, we don't have to create a new string every time we call our function recursively. And this helper function will return the number of ways we can decode the last k letters of the string. And that means from our main function numways, all we need to do is we just need to return helper of data and data's length. And that's the full string. Okay, now in the helper function, let's take care of the two base cases first. The first one was when the string is empty, we need to return one. So we're just gonna write, if k or the number of letters we're gonna look at is zero, then we're gonna return one. And the second base case was when the first letter is zero, we needed to return zero. And to do this, and to make it just a little bit more convenient, we're gonna define a new variable called s, which is going to be the starting index of the letters that we're examining. That's data's length minus k. And using this, we can say, if data square brackets s, or the letter, or the character, at the index s of data is equal to zero, then we're gonna return zero. Now, the next case we need to take care of are the two recursive cases that we saw earlier. The case where we need to call the recursive function twice, and the case where we need to call the function recursively only once. This is the notation we used earlier, but since we're not gonna call numways recursively, let's fix this notation so we have everything consistent. Okay, here we're calling the helper function recursively instead, and we're never gonna change the first argument. And in this first case right here, we have one, two, three, four, five. And let's say k right now is five. In that case, there are two ways to go about this. The first one is to interpret the first letter by itself and then decode it back to a. And in that case, we're gonna call helper with the same string and k minus one. The second way is to interpret the first two letters together and then decode it back to L instead. And for that, we're gonna call helper with the same string again and K minus two. So with the first recursive call, K minus one becomes four and we're gonna look at these four letters. And then with the second case, K minus two becomes three and we're gonna take a look at the last three letters. Let's also examine the second case. That's when, for example, we have two, seven, three, four, five as the string and five as K. In that case, there is no letter that maps to 27. So we only need to say 
we need to interpret 2 as b and then take a look at the rest of the string the last four characters so we need to only call helper again with 2 7 3 4 5 and k minus 1 which is 4. so basically what we're going to return from helper of the string and k will be either the sum of helper of the same string and k minus 1 and helper of the same string and k minus 2 or just helper of the same string and k minus 1. I think you'll notice that in either case we have helper of the same string and k minus 1. So let's store that in a new variable called result by writing result equals helper of data k minus 1. And then we need to add helper of the same string k minus 1 to that result only when we can interpret the first two letters of the part of the string that we're examining as a single letter. So that's when the first two letters, the number that it represents is less than or equal to 26 and also greater than or equal to 10. We can check that by writing if k is greater than or equal to 2 and int of data square brackets s colon s plus 2 is less than or equal to 26. So we need to first say k greater than or equal to to make sure that we have at least two letters in the part of the string that we're examining. And then let's just say here that data square brackets s colon s plus 2 retrieves the substring that we're interested in, the first two letters of the part of the string that we're examining. And then we need to convert it to an integer and make sure that that's less than or equal to 26. We don't have to worry about that part being greater than or equal to 10 here actually, because that part is already taken care of when we check that data square brackets s, or the first letter of the part of the string that we're examining is not equal to zero. So if it satisfies these two conditions, then we'll add helper of data comma k minus two to the results. And then after that, we just need to return results. Now this solution works, but it can be very inefficient depending on the nature of the input. So let's see why that's the case. And for that, let's examine the worst case for this problem. That's when we're given a string that solely consists of ones because then there are many, many ways to interpret this string. And if that was the case, num ways of let's say six ones, that would go into helper of the same string and six. And to find the value for that, we need to find the values for these two, helper of the same string and five and helper of that string and four. And here, if we write this one, helper of six ones and six as h of six, we'll see that to find the value for h of six, we need to first find the values for h of five and h of four. And to find the return value for h of five, we need to first find the return values for h of four and h of three and so on. And just like we saw in my video about Fibonacci sequence, this is not the most efficient approach because we need to repeat some of the computations over and over again. For example, to find h of four here and here. And this actually takes about o of two to the power of n in time to find the number of ways to interpret a string with n letters inside. And to fix this, we can just use dynamic programming and memoization. To do that, let's say if we are trying to find num ways of 111, then we'll create a new array with n plus one elements or four elements in this particular case. And then we're gonna use this to store some of the intermediate results from our function. We're gonna store helper of 111k at index k. So if k is one, that goes into this one. And this way, helper of 111 and n, or the last value that we need to find, will go into the last index of this array right here. And with that, our code is gonna look like this. This is almost identical to what we had earlier, except for these orange parts. And the first thing that's different, well, is that we change the names a bit. You know, we have num ways of dp and helper of dp now. And in num ways of dp, we first define a new integer array whose length is the original data's length plus one. So that's n plus one. 
And then let's say we want to initialize every element of this array to null, just like that. And then we're going to put it in a new variable called memo. And instead of calling helper with data and data's length, which is what we did earlier, we're passing memo as an argument as well. Now in helper DP, after taking care of the base cases, if we have a value already stored at index k of memo, then that's not going to be null. So if memo of k is not null, we're going to return that value instead of going through the whole function. And otherwise, this is the first time we're running this function with this particular k. So we'll find the result. And then instead of returning result right away, we're going to store it in memo at index k. And then we're going to return results. OK, and that's my solution. And with this solution, it only actually takes O of n in time to find numways of the given string instead of to the power of n that we saw earlier. And by the way, like I said earlier, this problem came from this website called Daily Coding Problem. You can find the website through my referral link, csdojo.io slash daily. It's a website that gives you a daily coding problem to practice with. And it's actually a website that's run by a friend of mine I used to work with at Google. If you use my referral link, it's going to give you a 10% discount on their premium subscription. But I would say even their free option and their blog articles that you're looking at right now are pretty good. Anyway, thank you so much for watching my videos as always. And I'll see you guys in the next video.